What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today we're going to take a look at downgrading our system software from 3.73 H Encore 2 to 3.60 Hinkaku Enzo and we're going to be using a homebrew application called Madoru and in Japanese that means to go back and the reason why we're going back to 3.60 is just to play around with other homebrew that's more compatible and also this custom firmware is permanent meaning you don't have to re-enable H Encore 2 every single time you reboot or power down or you just run out of battery and that's going to be more convenient and for now we're just going to downgrade to 3.60 just because from what I'm seeing out there on forums and things like that it's the best firmware to have all your homebrew enabled. The requirements for this downgrade is basically number one you must have Hinkaku or H Encore on firmware's 3.60 to 3.68 and for firmware's 3.65 to 3.73 you must be on H Encore 2. Uh, second your device's battery must be at least 50 percent and number three you must have all your plugins disabled because that's the only way for us to use the Modoro application and to install the older version, the 3.60 firmware. There's going to be three different things we're going to need in order for us to accomplish downgrade. Uh, the first one obviously is going to be the Modoro application, the modoro.vpk and there's two different files. There's one for the 3.70 firmware and under and the other VPK is 3.71 to 3.73 which I'll be using in this video. Uh, the second thing we're going to need is a FTP client such as FileZilla or some other FTP client that you're using that's working efficiently. And number three we're going to need the PS Vita official 3.60 firmware. Alright so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to open up our Vita shell and we're going to enable our FTP connection. Let's go to start and make sure your select button is enabled to FTP go back press select and now we are running the FTP server we can go on to our desktop and let's start our FileZilla app and this app is working great for me because there's a drop down menu here or drop down window and it shows all of the different devices I have connected to and here is my PS Vita and perfect we we're ready to go now go to the first link in the description and that will take you to github.com and we're going to download the version 2.1 modoru.vpk file click on this here show in our folder there we go and next we're going to go to the second link in the description and download the official firmware 3.60 and it's going to take you to mega.nz click on the big green download button there we go Let's refresh it nice we can right click and extract the files let's grab this here there we go and we're gonna grab this file here the PS Vita official firmware 3.60 zip let's move that into our downloads we can delete this one and this one and we can extract this here and there we go. You should now see a new file called psp2update.pup. Let's delete that zip. And now we're going to go into our FTP client. And we are going to be using the UMA file folder. And the reason why we're doing this is because I have a PS Vita. Well, not us, right? But everyone's going to be different. But for me, since I'm on a PS Vita 1000, I don't have internal uh, memory so I'll be using the memory card installed on my system here and it's going to be the UMA folder and you have to use your internal storage if you're on a PS Vita 2000 the second generation and the reason why is because I'm on a SD to Vita adapter and we're going to have to disable all plugins in order for us to use Modoru and if I'm disabling my plugins I won't be able to access any of the files on my SD2 Vita adapter so we're going to be moving all of our files into our UMA folder so let's just drag our VPK into here there we go and also our update file this might take a little bit just because it's a large file here 
shouldn't take too long like about a minute and a half okay so it's finished copying all of the files we can now go back onto our Vita here we go and this is very critical guys that you follow each step here moving forward because you can break your system if you don't properly uh, follow these steps right so let's exit out of here now we're gonna go find our VPK mine is gonna be in the UMA folder and the first thing we're gonna do is install that modoru.vpk file or application press X to install this package and press X to continue Modoro just got done installing and we're going to double check the app folder to make sure that it was installed in here and it's not so we're going to have to go find it and I'm sure it's going to be in my UXO folder let's go to app and there is Modoro so it's in the incorrect folder so make sure that it's installed in the correct one uh, let's press triangle and we're going to copy this perfect let's go back to the UMA0 folder and that's my memory card let's go to app and here's Vita shell let's press triangle and paste and there is Modoru the app ready to go and now what we're gonna do is copy the PSP2 update file by pressing triangle and we're gonna move this go back to our app folder go to Modoru and we're gonna paste it right in here perfect and now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna disable all of our plugins so we're gonna go to our UXO folder and we're gonna rename our tie folder and what we're gonna do is say please change me okay perfect now we're gonna go back to our URO folder and change that as well because we do have plugins in this folder too so let's rename that and say please change me you can rename it to whatever you desire I just think it's cool to name it this way that way I know that's the one to change right so let's go back and now what we're gonna do is press start and reboot our system okay here we go all rebooted and I'm gonna have to run H on core 2 again Hit yes there we go and we're gonna hit exit perfect now we're gonna find our Modoru app there it is Let's hit the start and it says enable unsafe homebrew first before using the software perfect so we're gonna go back to our settings and we're gonna go to our Hinkaku settings and we must enable unsafe homebrew check that now we can go back so here we go it says Modoro version 2.1 by the flow 3.73 to firmware 3.60 press X to confirm so let's press X and it says this software will make permanent modifications to your Vita if anything goes wrong there is no recovery not even with a hard hardware flasher so it's continue in 20 seconds or it continues in 20 seconds the creators provide this tool alright so it says press X to accept these terms and start the installation let me finish what I was reading there the creators provide this tool as is without warranty of any kind express or implied and cannot be held liable for any damage done so we are taking that risk let's press X to accept these terms let's press X there we go 
and it's going to start copying our update and now it's extracting the PSP2 and there we go system update there it is installing the system software do not power off the system during installation and there is the reset very nice and what's great about this uh, Hinkaku exploit or the Hinkaku custom firmware permanent custom firmware is we're going to be using the web browser on our PS Vita so we're almost there just a few more steps and we're going to be having the installation of the custom firmware permanently very excited for that updating database do not power off the system Pretty good all right let's double check here let's go to our settings and I'm gonna have to grab some type of card to block my Mac address here we go we got a photo let's go to our system system information and there it is 3.60 ready to go perfect now the next step is to enable your Wi-Fi connection your internet connection my Wi-Fi settings is enabled and connected we're gonna go and open up our browser perfect and we're gonna go up here tap to enter an address and we're gonna go HTTPS colon backslash backslash and we're gonna type in in Kaku Kaku here we go make sure in Kaku H E N K A K U dot x y z backslash go and by pressing enter this should automatically uh, install the molecular shell and the hinkaku so let's hit that and there we go let's take a closer look here and there it is once it's done we want to go to our settings and there it is Hinkaku settings and we want to enable unsafe homebrew perfect and now we're gonna check our system settings here we go and our system information there is the 3.60 now that we have the custom firmware, it's time to make it permanent. So we're gonna go to our Vita shell, <clears throat> start that up, and we're gonna enable our FTP client. So press start and make sure your select button is enabled to FTP. And now we're gonna press select and go onto our PC and copy the VPK onto our Vita. Here we are back on our desktop and we're gonna open up our FileZilla our FTP clients get this ready let's connect that make your way to the Hinkaku Enzo link and I'll take you to github.com this is version 1.1 and click on the enzo.vpk file and now what we're gonna do is copy this VPK into our uh, UXO folder and there it is VPK so now we're gonna go back on our Vita and install that here we go cancel our connection go to the UXO folder and install the enzo.vpk install this package continue
Back on our home menu, we're going to have the Enzo application. Let's run that. And let's read what we got going on here. This software will make permanent modifications to your Vita. If anything goes wrong, there is no recovery, not even with the hardware flasher. So it says press circle to accept these terms or any other key to not accept. So let's press circle. So now what we're going to do to install this is press X. It says locking system, checking MBR. Sorry if it's hard to see, it's just the black is really tough to capture on the camera. It says check for previous installation, okay, writing config, blocks, MBR, okay, this installation has completed successfully, success. Press any key to reboot. And now it should reboot to the permanent custom firmware. That's a good sign. Very good. Perfect. And let's check our beta shell. Awesome, it's working. So we do have a permanent custom firmware because our system just rebooted and all is well and good. So now what we're gonna do is press triangle and we're gonna refresh our live area. And what this does is just enabling our plugins or other programs and homebrew things like that that's on our system. And there is Moldoru. Yeah, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please comment down below. Let's try to start a thread. Let's try to start a some type of like community thread here on YouTube. And as you can see, PKGJ is working just fine. I can download any of these games. Very nice. So yeah, any questions, comment down below. And we'll try to work together and see if we can get you guys squared away in completing this whole process. It is kind of long. Uh, long video here and I do apologize for that uh, but I wanted to be clear on every single step that way you don't break your system and you are successful just like I am so thank you so much for watching if you haven't already subscribed to the channel hit that sub button so you don't miss a video like this one in the future and if you guys enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up helps me out a lot and I will catch you guys on the next one take care